Sun goes down, our spirits free. Nothing left but our energy. Take my hand, we can go and see. A world unknown, come and smile with me. Welcome, tree tips. Please enjoy your time at the Golden Persimmon Theatre. If you have any questions or need assistance, feel free to ask. Thank you for joining us.
Alrighty. What's going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope you've been having a wonderful day. Back at the old grind once again. My lovely three-day weekend is over, which is a big sag. But on the upside, it's a short work week. Only four days. What's up, Zim? Welcome in, my dude. Hope you've been good. Be very late for you. <laughs> well, appreciate you popping in. Uh, Goldie, let's chat. Goldie, let's chat. There we go. Wunderbar. It is 234. Yeah. Yeah, I, I figured as much. That's, uh, that is quite the early morning you've got there. <laughs> well, I hope you got nothing going on in the morning. Or, uh, this was, this was all part of the Keikaku. Because I cannot stay up that late. Nuh uh, not with my schedule. Mm -mm. I would be dead. I would be dog tired dead in the morning. How's it going, Ray? Nothing. Unemployed? <laughs> oh, that's true. I suppose. But you should still get, you know, try to get a good night's sleep if you can. Ray, congratulations on claiming the VIP seat for the stream. The most prestigious of my channel point redeems is there is only the one. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't use me as an excuse. Money is important, after all. You know, it pays for things, even even though it is inherently evil. <laughs> but it do be important. Working on it. It's good. It's good. It's good. Good to hear. Good to hear. Tonight we're gonna be pretty chill. So maybe maybe I can I can lull you to sleep with my. Uh, you just put brownies in the oven? Ooh. Hell yeah. Man, I haven't had a good brownie in God knows how long. I'm tempted to make some now. I gotta get to the store, though. <sighs> but my car is broken. The dilemmas. Oh, yeah. Chocolate with Reese's. I remember you talking about that last time we were we were chatting. We were hanging. Give brownie. <laughs> right? I hope you have enough to uh, share around with the class, Ray. <laughs> but those do sound delicious. But I do need to get my car fixed. Oh, the cold kind of killed it, I think. That and the fact that I don't really drive it around that much. Uh, I don't know. I have been kind of thinking maybe I should sell it once I get it fixed. Because I don't really use it. I have I was thinking last night, you know, it was those classic, one of those classic just in bed, lying awake with my own thoughts kind of moment where I was like, realistically, what am I using my car for? In the last, I don't know, X months since I started working remotely from home. It's like the occasional, you know, trip to wherever, right? Like a store or going out to get, I don't know, something. And then the amount of times I've had to, you know, because I don't really use it. The amount of times I've, when I've gone out to use it and there was something wrong with it just because I don't use it. Because fun fact, if you don't use your car for a long enough period of time, it eventually will stop working. You know, it's one of those things that you do have to use on a semi-regular basis. Which is kind of shitty. It, it has like a weird built-in, uh, like, what's it? I don't know, ob obsoles obsolescence type thing? Damn, seven streak, sheesh, Sam. Hell yeah, let's go. Mr. Lurkin. 
<laughs> no, I do appreciate though all the lurks. Anyone who's who's here just just chilling and vibing up in the upper balcony. It's all good. It's all Gucci. But then there's also I it also got me thinking. If I didn't have a car, I wouldn't need car insurance, right? Which would just be another thing that I could not spend money on. Because that right there is a good like thousand bucks a year. Almost. Or something close to it. I don't know, I have to double check. But hey, I'd gladly have an extra, you know, K in my pocket just to throw at other stuff. Stuff that I actually really like care about. Cause if I'm not driving, I feel like there's I don't know. Is is there really a reason to have insurance if you don't drive? Not really, huh? Like, most of the time, I think, if I did need a ride somewhere, it would be to the airport. And more often than not, I'd just get an Uber for that anyway. Exactly. And with grocery deliveries, right? Basically, the money that I would spend on insurance, I feel like, would cover the cost of me, you know, paying that extra little bit for, like, the occasional grocery shop. Because... Most of the time, when I get groceries, I go with the roommates to Costco, and that pretty much gets me set for, like, several weeks. Like, th th two, three weeks tops. Maybe four if I'm, like, really stretching it. And then, you know, if I need something a little extra, I can always, yeah, either hitch a ride with one of them when they go, or just get it delivered. It's, it's just as easy. The only thing I feel like would be kind of a, a bummer would be uh, on the occasion for like Thanksgiving, I do drive down to a uh, shared location to meet my parents. Uh, we do go somewhere else sometimes, although the last time I spoke to my mom, she was like, why would I fly out? When I could just, you know, have you fly over instead, because they are they are getting up there in years, you know, traveling is a little harder for them, which is fair. I understand that. And if, you know, they're willing to throw a couple hundred bucks my way to fly me out to them where they live on the East Coast. I, again, I, I just need a, you know, a ride to the airport. Which more likely than not will be through Uber anyway, or one of my roommates. So I don't really need a car. I don't know. There, there's a few things I got to kind of logistically figure out about it. I probably want to talk to my parents too, just um, get their opinion, their wizened opinion, because they've probably dealt with such things or at the very least kind of know the ropes. Because truth be told, I didn't actually buy my own car. Uh, my parents kind of took care of all that. So I don't really know the uh, legality and all that, you know, transfer of ownership and all that, all that jazz kind of thing you know pink slips i know those are a thing that's a word associated with cars i'm very like green when it comes to that kind of stuff uh, definitely definitely something i i've started thinking about very heavily just recently it's weighing on me a little bit it's got me a little bit stressed just because it's like it's that thing where like I know the minute that I get rid of it, it's just going to be like, oh, but now that like kind of locks me out of certain things. But then at the, again, at the same time, it's like realistically. Is it worth it, though? Like just pumping money into it for no real reason. Ah, it's hard. It's a tough choice. Either that. Either that, or I sell my current car and I get a, a smaller car that I know will last that, like, I don't really have to worry about driving out often, like an electric car. One of those little ones that, you know, just gets me around town. Like, that would literally be the only reason why I would need a car is just to kind of drive around town on my own in case my roommates are, like, gone for whatever reason. Yeah, just like a little one-seater or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the logistics of, like, 
would, would electric survive more if I don't drive it around? Like, I need something where if it's not used for a very long time, I like I don't have to worry about it, like breaking down on me, you know? I don't know. I got to do some research. I got to talk to people who know cars. I wish my uncle were still alive that built cars for a hobby. He he would definitely know the the answers to these questions. I'm really bummed. <laughs> Maybe I could talk to my brother too. I think he's he knows a bit more about cars than I do. And my dad probably does as well. I don't know. Again, I I got to make some calls. I got to talk to some people. Get one of those tiny Japanese loading trucks. Hmm. Could I even get one of those? I mean, I would totally be down. Like, as long as it's covered, right? I don't really need it for anything else than just getting me around places. And because it's a flatbed, you know, I wouldn't really have to worry about space. It could carry everything that I need. That would be funny. Lots of stuff to think about. Lots of stuff to think about, for sure. But that is probably one of the bigger life decisions that I'm going to have to be making soon. Lots of choices. Lots of choices. Because then the other thing is too, right? Like, just have someone jump in the flatbed and they need a ride? I mean, yes. But then also at the same time. Also, welcome in, uh, 8 Ball. How's it going, my dude? Hope you've been well. Uh, Goldie, please welcome 8 Ball. To the th to the theater. I don't know. Have you been here since the last time? Welcome, eight ball. Prepare <laughs> for a spectacular show at the Golden Persimmon Theater. If you need any assistance or have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy your time here. A K car. I don't know what a K. What what is a K car? Or is that is that what you were talking about? with uh, the Japanese loading trucks. Is that what that is, Zim? Is that why you said it? I'm looking it up. All according to Keikaku. A K car is the smallest category of Japanese expressway legal motor vehicles. Oh. So it is a very small car, but it is still legal to drive on like freeways and stuff. Hmm. But yeah, as I was saying, the other thing that I need to think about is we are getting close to the point where my roommates are looking to buy a house and I know they were OK uh, with me, you know, renting from them. I still think that's the case. I'm not entirely sure. So. Come this summer, I will most likely be moving. But I don't know, those plans could change. I might need I might need my own like actual vehicle is the thing. I got to talk to them, too. Hmm. That's the other thing. So I got to talk to them to figure out, you know, living conditions, because if I do move in with them, that could only be for a year. But then again, that, that does give me plenty of time to get another car if I need it. It's just, you know, if I can go without a car for a full year, that would be kind of nice, right? Summer's the best time for change. True. Summer is the time for reaping the fruits of your labor. You know, <laughs> that is that is the time for summer. Is cashing in on all the hard work that you've put into the year. At least in, uh, you know, regards to, to taro, tarot, and all that. That is generally what that season represents. Celebrating. Making those changes. A tarot. Yes. So there's a lot of, oh, we're doing the thing. You got a sound alert. What one do we get? 
Oh, a round of applause. Nice. A bit of applause. Let's go. <laughs> Want some actual applause? I know, that one's a little broken. My sound ones are a little broken when Goldie does them. Because I switched over to them being sound redeems through sound alerts instead of um, played through my own system. Hmm. Something else I need to think about. A few things I need to think about nowadays. What do I do with that? What do I do with my uh, stream notes? There they are. Hold on. Let me make a note of that. Do do do. -do. Just as a quick little reminder to myself, it do be National Spice uh, Hot Hot Food Day. Spicy Spicy Hot Food Day. This is true. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm glad you remembered that, Ray. <laughs> Will you get a job? Oh, hold on. Let me see. Let me grab a magic eight ball. What's up, Seth? Uh, no, Seth? Hold on. Zim just asked the magic eight ball a very, very important question. Will Zim get a job? Let's see. Eh. Oh, that is, that is, you cannot read that. Hold on. It says. As I see it, yes. So the Magic 8 Ball has spoken. You will get a job, Zim. You will. What's hip happening, though, Seth? I hope you've been well. Goldie, please welcome Seth into the theater. I guess I could leave the uh, the handy cam open. Just vibing, welcome, Twitch con dates. We're delighted to have you at the Golden Persimmon Theatre. Right. If you require any assistance or have inquiries, feel free to ask. Enjoy the show. <laughs> That's right. I, I did actually see those quite recently as well. The uh, TwitchCon dates have been uh, posted. So if you haven't seen, I believe, if memory serves, the uh, EU TwitchCon will be in Rotterdam. Uh, Netherlands, and that will be during the summer, I think like June, like the last week in June. And then uh, for America, it will be in San Diego, uh, back to San Diego uh, instead of Las Vegas, thankfully. And that will be in September, like the end of September. Yeah, 22nd, 20, 22nd, 20, second. second to last week of September. Right? Well, let me scroll back, scroll down to the September. Yeah, second to last weekend of September. Very nice. Have a good lurk, Ray. Thank you for tossing a, a coin, uh, Zim. But that that's um, that's actually a 3D redeem. You silly! Didn't read the redeems. Everybody point and laugh. Ha 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 ha! I'm kidding. It's fine. Uh, I'll uh, I'll refund you that one because it didn't it didn't do the thing that was supposed to do because I'm not using the model. You give anyway? No, no, you take it back. I have refunded you your points, you silly bean. I'm hyped because all the fun stuff from last year. Like hell with it. I'm gonna make sure I can go this year. Put some money aside. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to see who who all is going to uh, the San Diego one this year, because it is very likely that I may I may also be around in September. I should have the days off and the uh, the ability to travel down there, but we'll see. It's still a ways away. We got time to plan. Um. Oh, that's exciting. That's exciting. I'm glad it is in San Diego again, because I, I much prefer San Diego over 
Las Vegas, for sure. Las Vegas always just seems too seedy for me. San Diego, San Diego feels right, you know? It's still kind of hot and a little humid, which... It's during the fall, so it probably shouldn't be too bad. During September, should be pretty nice, pretty good weather, if memory serves. Waiting on a new job to start? Nice. Hell yeah. Um, I could request off time now, I suppose, but I don't really see a reason to. Most people don't really request time off. Uh... All that often, at least for my my shift. At least I feel like they don't in the time frames that I normally would, which is kind of nice. You know, there hasn't been like a big overlap where I'm worried like, oh shit, I don't think I can get these days off because I see a bunch of other people have requested them off. So I should be okay. Or the very least, uh, I've noticed that a lot of my coworkers don't really request time off like too far in advance. Maybe like a couple weeks prior, which is fair. I still think that's a good good practice. Um, but once I know for certain, I'll probably lock those dates in like well in advance. Hmm. But we'll see. There's a lot. There's a lot to plan. There's a lot to discuss. Because I also am going back to the UK for a little bit later this year. Just for a short amount of time. It's not going to be a long trip like like last year. God, that's weird to say. <laughs> Probably only like a, a long weekend type thing. Maybe like three, three days or so. Like one day, one day traveling in. Maybe two days of just like being there. Two or three days of, of being there and then one day to travel back. So just like a five-day trip type thing. Yeah, that should be good. But that's exciting. And I don't know. So I gotta talk to my roommates about when we're wanting to go to Japan. When that trip is gonna happen. I thought we would be talking about it this year, but then at the same time, again, my roommates are... If the plan still holds, they are planning on buying a new house. Or buying a house. I don't know if it'll be new or not. So there's that whole thing that they're dealing with. So I don't know. Maybe maybe also planning a trip to Japan might not be in the cards for them quite yet. Uh, that might be like a couple years down the line sort of thing. So we'll see. Speaking of which, though. My Tokyo Treats box came in just the other day um saturday in fact where now where is my where's my little knife where's my little little buddy there you are a couple days early stay a couple days after the con just to explore california fly back cross country that's fair there's a lot there's a there's a decent amount to see in in california depending on where you go. And um, San Diego is, is is pretty nice. It's pretty nice. All right, here's the box. Chat, it is a New Year snacking party. A little late, but you know what? That's okay. We can still celebrate the New Year, even if it is a few weeks into, <laughs> into the month. All right, just gonna move it over here for now. But so far, the year's been going good. So why not celebrate a little bit with some, some treats, even if it is a little bit later into the year. Japan do, do, do does, uh, they do New Year pretty, you know, they do pretty well. Ooh, sick. We're starting out with the Kit Kats. I love when we start out with the Kit Kats. I love Kit Kats. They're so good. And for this box, we have the Lucky Red and White Kit Kat. 
Pretty, pretty standard looking packaging. Always nice, though. I imagine this is just going to be a white chocolate flavor. Super sweet white chocolate with a classic milk chocolate to create a perfect blend of irresistible flavor. Hell yeah. Packaging of the chocolate itself. Very nice. Always good presentation when it comes to these. Oh, that's some good chocolate smell right there. Even though it is a Hershey's brand, or a Nestle, oh, it's a Nestle brand. But I think that's still, wait, is Nestle a part of Hershey's? I, I always forget. Kit Kats are okay, though. Pretty standard, you know, Kit Kat, there it is. There's the, the normal milk chocolate with white chocolate. I'm kind of curious to see how it tastes combined. I don't think I've ever had chocolate that has both. Usually it's like all white chocolate or all milk chocolate. So I guess we'll see. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie. I can't really taste the white chocolate. Not really. This more or less tastes like a normal Kit Kat. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I feel like it might be a little sweeter. I don't know. I, I haven't had actually a normal Kit Kat in such a long time. I feel like I've forgotten what they taste like. But that just, that feeling wise, that kind of just tastes like a normal Kit Kat to me. It's good though. It's solid. It's solid, baby. Can't complain. That's some, that's some tasty chocolate that that is. Taiyaki. Oh, they sent me Taiyaki? Let's fucking go. So we got some good luck Taiyaki. Uh, if you've never had Taiyaki before, you're missing out. It's delicious. Did you know that Thai or sea bream are symbols of luck and wealth in Japan? I actually did not. That's kind of fascinating. I wonder why that is. I wonder if it's because they're red and red is usually associated with luck. Hmm. We added this crispy Taiyaki snack with a smooth chocolatey center. To bring you luck for this year. Hell yeah, more chocolate. I am all for that. Also, I love Taiyaki. Oh, it's like the wafer kind. Okay, brilliant. This is going to be delicious. I, I am telling you right now. One, it's a wafer. You can't go wrong with wafers. Wafers are like one of probably the best like modes of other you know, snack transportation, usually like a cream filling or like strawberry or in this case, chocolate wafers, like absolutely delicious for it. Now, the question is, the real question is, how good is the chocolate? That's going to be the real deciding factor, because you really can't fuck up a wafer. They're pretty much all the same wherever you go. So I, that's not really what I'm concerned about. It is definitely the chocolate, though. Hmm. It smells pretty, pretty, you know, cut and paste type chocolate, but I guess we'll see. So cheers, chat. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty generic. Nothing's like stupendous. It's not like gourmet chocolate, but it's good. It is good. It does its job well. You know, it gives you that nice, airy crunch feeling. The amount of mouth <laughs> of saliva that came out of my mouth right now. You can see the chocolate there. It is right proper filled with chocolate. And it's it's that nice kind of like airy chocolate, too. It's not very dense or thick, so it pairs very well with the wafer. If you ever had like chocolate in a wafer, you probably know what this tastes like. And this is this is essentially just a big chocolate wafer so it's not bad it's nothing to write home about but it's it's is good 
Mm. Or at least it's good enough. Okay. We'll finish that off later. We'll move on to the next thing. But that is tasty. Damn it, Seth. Fuck your taste buds, black garlic. Curse you. Hold on, I grab a spoon. Oh, this is a fork, but that's okay. The fork will do. It will suffice as it is a it is a means of transportation for the pepper. Come on. Get a nice little dollop here. There you go, chat. There's a nice little dollop. <coughs> Damn you, Seth. Damn you. I curse thy name. Uh. <sighs> okay. We have sesame sweet potato sticks coming up. This snack is based on the classic treat called Daigaku Himo, or University Potato. These dense and crunchy potato sticks are a little bit sweet with a strong sesame flavor. Oh boy, sesame. Hold on, where are they? Oh, that's not it. Is this it? Ah, here we go. Ha! Here are the sticks. That is some fancy looking packaging, not gonna lie. Anything that's gold. That has gold. Oh. Ah! It's gold packaging. Always looks fancy as fuck. Alright, sweet potato sesame sticks. Now, I am technically slightly allergic to sesame, so I probably won't be eating a lot of these very quickly. The Avatar I... <laughs> Thank you for the clip, Seth. Hold on. I'm kind of curious. Ah! It's behind my handy cam. No, no, no. Play that again. <laughs> uh, <coughs> oh, very true, very true. Thank you, Seth. <laughs> Damn, these are uh, these are pretty thick, thick little boys, and they smell like sesame. I mean, have you ever smelled sesame before? That's pretty much all I'm picking up. <clears throat> ah, it's in the back of my throat! <laughs> okay, it's fine. We're fine. I'll just have some sesame sweet potato sticks, and then I'll, I'll be suffering in a different way later. Ooh! That is a very pleasant crunch. I don't know if you guys can hear... Listen, sometimes you just have to, you know. I, I honestly don't have, I have nothing. I have nothing. I'm just gonna eat my potato sticks. Fuck off. You hear that crunch? These are very crunchy. They're tasty though. It is a very light sesame flavor, for sure. Oh yeah, I could eat like a pound of these. I won't, because I am allergic, so I should only eat a couple. Just so I don't murder myself later. But, pretty good. Oh, fuck's sake, Seth. 
No, we're not reliving that one. I'm not playing it on stream again. <laughs> uh. Although I feel like I feel like with the two together, you know, it, it makes sense. <laughs> These are good though. Back to the snacks. These are good. Solid potato snack. You know, simple flavor, but it, it goes very well together. The sweet potato and the sesame. Excellent job combination. And it has an amazing crunch. Absolutely phenomenal crunch. It's probably the best part about it. So crunchy. All right, we got another crunchy snack, but it's in the more general crunchiness. A pretzel mild roast. If you're looking for a mildly sweet cracker like snack, then look no further. These yummy pret sticks are the perfect snack to enjoy at a New Year's party. Why do I feel like the box is like trying to persuade me otherwise? Look at this box. This little guy on it's like, no, stay away. These are my sticks. I won't let you have them. They're mine. Well, too bad, buddy. I don't know who you are, but these pret sticks are going to be mine. I will devour them all. Or, 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 well, no, I'm right. <laughs> I mean, I look at him. He, he's, he looks very concerned that anybody is, he's gripping those pret sticks like they're the last pret sticks on, on the planet. He's like, no, stay away. He's got the hand up. Like, stop, stop, get back. Too bad. Too bad, sir. I'm partaking in one of your pret sticks. I don't know, it's pretty standard. If you've ever seen a pret stick before, then or it, it's basically a breadstick. It's a very thin breadstick. That's what this is. It has zero scent. It has absolutely no scent to it. Okay, it has, has, okay, it has a little bit, but it's very faint. Well, it's pocky without the coating. That's what I'd say. And actually, it, it is, it does have a little sweetness to it. Hmm. That's kind of strange. It's, it's very close, at least in terms of flavor, to like a butter cookie. If you've ever had a butter cookie before, it's very similar, but like toned down like a couple notches like butter cookies you bite into one of those it's it slaps you you know what you're you're biting into this it's much more subtle not bad though it's pretty chill it's a pretty calming snack honestly it definitely helps out with the uh the spice that i was subjected to earlier it's a good compliment you know in fact I'm kind of curious. Come here, you. Oh, oh, that was, oh, I coated that way more than I wanted to. Oh, oh, no, scrape, scrape some of that off. Scrape some of that off. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, look at that. Now it's coated. Now we got some coating on it. Oh, it's on my fingers now too. Fuck. Cheers, chat. Woo! Ah, that was a freebie. Oh, that was good though, actually. Not beard, not beard. Pretty standard snack. Nothing too remarkable on this one. Very generic, but it's got good flavor. It's got good crunch. You know, can't go, can't really go wrong with it. If you see one or if you see a box of it, you probably won't be disappointed. 
I think we had, um, I think we had one of the, the previous boxes, we had like a pizza flavored one of those. And that was pretty tasty. But just the base pretz is also solid. <coughs> oh, fuck's sake. It's getting all like saliva y in the back of my throat. <sighs> Maybe I did still put a little too much of that on there. Ah, it's fine. We press onward. We press onward because now we have donuts. Nagoya donuts. Ooh, hell yeah. I am all for a donut right now. Again, with the gold packaging. I love the theme, bro. We have so much gold! Look at all this gold, baby. All the gold, gold and red. We love it. All right. We included these pillowy, soft, and mildly sweet red bean donuts. Perfect for a New Year's party. Ooh, I don't think I've ever eaten a red bean donut. Red beans are eaten on New Year's in Japan to ward off bad luck and bad vibes. Oh, perfect. Maybe this red bean can get rid of the bad vibes going on in my tongue right now. <laughs> or the back of my throat. <clears> throat. Ooh, this is like a cake donut. Oh, that smells good. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the stuff. Here's the donut. You know, it's pretty plain, pretty unremarkable. And honestly, kind of looks like a bagel, if you ask me. Like, if I handed you this, and I was like, here, have this bagel, you probably wouldn't question it. And would be like, oh, yeah, thanks for the bagel. Because honestly, that's what it looks like. If you told me this was a donut, I would be like, fuck off. No, it's not. That's a bagel. <laughs> but it is a donut. Apparently, it's filled with red bean. And I am a fan of red bean. Oh, that does smell so good. That's a very soothing scent. Hmm. Hmm. It's actually not as much red bean as I thought. I figured it would be more full than that. Of course, I'm used to American standards of, you know, a filled donut. They fill those things with way too much cream, man. Filled donuts, I, for the sole reason of, it, they're just, it, it's just cream, it feels like. And it, it's like one-tenth donut. I can't do it. For that alone, like, cream-filled donuts, just, they just don't do it for me. Or even jelly-filled donuts. Can't do those either. It's just too much. It's too much jelly. It's too much cream. That's all you taste, and that's not what I'm looking for in a donut. I like, you know, the 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 donut itself, and then whatever it's got, like either in it or on top of it, it should just complement it. That shouldn't be the only thing that you taste slash are dealing with. Cause you know, the second you bite into a cream-filled donut over here in America or jelly-filled donut, that shit's getting everywhere. Unless you've got like 20 napkins on hand, like ass gonna get all over the place. It's always a mess. This is perfect. This is the right amount. It's just enough for me to taste, but I still get the, the nice pillowy, like donut part of it. This is tasty. Mm. It is more on the cakey side though, which I'm not opposed to, but I do know that some people, they don't like cake donuts. So this one might not be for you, if that's the case. You can kind of see, I'll give you another look, how dense that is. It's, it is very different than the general, or the, the average uh, American donut, which are very light and airy. Mm. But I'm all for this. Delicious. I would say the donut was is better than the taiyaki. As much as I love, like, these chocolate wafer things, this was really good. Like, th these are a dime a dozen. You can, get, you can get something like this very easily, like, anywhere. But this red bean filled donut, 
this was a solid this was a solid uh snack for sure i don't know you just don't really find red bean all that all that often over here which is fair all right what do we got next so we got next age mochi bites or age mochi why did i say age age mochi what am i some stupid american age mochi age mochi bites Actually, that's more Australian, huh? Hold on. I can do I can do better Southern. Let's see. <clears throat> she you these edgy mochi bats. There we go. American. <laughs> no, okay. Okay, mochi. I can speak Japanese. I studied for four years. Ooh, this is a big bag. Bigger than I thought it would be. There it be. Very nice. Very good presentation. Also got that little bit of gold on it, so gets points there, baby. Hagemochi Biori. What are these? Since mochi is a classic New Year's treat, we sent you these Hagemochi or deep fried mochi snacks. <gasps> they sent me mochi! Bro! Deep fried mochi at that? <gasps> I'm in heaven! Yes! <laughs> Agemochi is a slightly sweetened soy sauce flavor that perfectly balances the mochi. Oh, I'm going to be so all over these. These are going to be gone. These are going to be gone in seconds. Yes. Yes. Sorry, kind of kind of going a little ham over these, but they, they smell so good. Bro, I love mochi. And I hate when I'm like, oh, yeah, mochi is delicious. And then someone is like, oh, yeah, I love mochi ice cream. D nothing. Mm. That is probably one of my biggest pet peeves. Like. I realize that over here in America, most of the time when people say mochi, they are referring to the mochi ice cream. But at the same time, you have to understand that mochi is what's covering the ice cream. Right? So if I just say mochi, I just mean mochi. The covering. Because that in and of itself is a Japanese delicacy. You need them plain. They can be filled with stuff. These look like really tiny churros. Look at these. Oh, but they smell so good. That little bit of soy sauce. Because that's the best way to eat mochi. You get some mochi, you fry it up, either lightly, you could deep fry it, however you want to do it, but you know, you could lightly fry it in a pan, and then you dip it in some soy sauce. Oh, it's heavenly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That is a that is the flavor of Japan right there. These kind of snacks. Honestly, this is basically just like a rice cracker at this point. Oh, it's so smoky flavored. Oh my god. I can taste that a very gentle like smoky flavor. I don't know if that's the soy sauce or if that's the deep fried mochi part. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Oh, it's so good, though. I kid you not. I could eat like a bajillion of these. If I had to go to a desert island and all I had were these snacks, I would not be a, I would, I would not be unhappy about it. I would be perfectly okay. It honestly has been far too long since I've had this flavor. This flavor specifically. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These Age Mochi Bites. These are my favorite thing so far. These little bad boys. They're, oh, they're so good. Have you ever had a soy sauce flavored rice cracker? It's a very similar flavor. But this one just it's it's feels like fresher for some reason. I don't know.
This is definitely like number one though so far. These bad boys. Mm. I'm having like a ratatouille moment here. This brings me back to sitting in my grandma's living room, just eating these rice crackers while just watching TV and vibing. She would always get like two packs of those whenever we would visit. One will be for me, one will be for my sister. Granted, we would eat through those in like one sitting because we're, we were kids and we had no self-control, but <sighs> it's a familiar, delicious flavor that I will always hold dear to my heart. And this captures it perfectly. Good snack. Excellent snack. It's crunchy. It's savory. It lingers in the mouth, but not in a good, not in a bad way. Mm. It's all you'd want. It's all you'd want from a crunchy, savory snack. Oh man, I feel like anything after that's just gonna be like a downgrade. I feel bad for these seaweed and salt potato sticks. We got more sticks, more potato sticks. The second potato sticked item. Like the first one was, where are they? There they are. Put them behind them. We had these sesame potato sticks, and now we have these seaweed and salt potato sticks. I think I think they are more or less the same in form, but I mean this one's gold and this one's just yellow. This is plain yellow, so I don't know. That one's already kind of winning on the uh, presentation value, but let's see. Maybe these are tastier. Because don't get me wrong, sesame is a is if used correctly, sesame is a very good flavor. In my opinion, sesame can enhance a lot of dishes in a lot of ways, but you can put too much in it. It is a very strong flavor, so you do have to be very careful with how much sesame you put on stuff. If you do, you want to use it. You don't need a whole lot. Those are perfect. That has just the right amount of sesame where you can taste it, but you also get the flavor of the sweet potato. I feel like this is mostly just going to be like a salty potato snack. Maybe with a, with a hint of, of sea with for the seaweed. Hmm. It more or less just smells like a like a bag of potato chips. Yeah. Fairly unremarkable. They are much smaller than the other ones, these potato sticks. These are definitely thinner. So if you like a little bit more thinner of a snack, these might be uh, what you're looking for. These, uh, let's see. They are uh, a Stick Potato. Hmm. Yeah. No, that just tastes like a, like a pretty bog standard potato chip. Not gonna lie. Hmm, actually. They kind of remind me of like really crispy french fries. And I think that could be just because of like their form. Like look at that. That looks like I just grabbed a bunch of fries out of like a McDonald's thing, right? I'm about to just devour them. Yeah. Yep. Saw a little snack. Saw a little snack, but flavor-wise, they just taste like normal kind of salted potato chips. So nothing too crazy, nothing too special, but it is a, it's, it's, the crunch is on, on point. You know, the little stick, stick shape is kind of novel. I don't know, it reminds me of French fries, which I think is interesting as opposed to the normal like potato ship shape shape. And they're not too salty. I know some some potato chips they can they can that salt level. You gotta watch out. Ooh, we have a lemon drink. Any lemon fans up in here? A CC lemon drink. Sounds good. Zim, you a big fan of lemon? Oh, salty's good. 
Yeah, no, it's it's just the right amount of salty, I think. Not too overbearing, but you do get that nice salty flavor still. And you, I can't even taste like the seaweed part. So this is CC Lemon, 12 lemons worth of vitamin C. Man, do I probably need this. We're ready to make the New Year's toast with a slightly sweet and lemony drink packed with 12 lemons worth of vitamin C. It's the perfect drink to toast for good health. Damn. Damn. Hold on. I have just the cup for this. Come here, you. All right, we'll put it in my angry tree goblet. I mean, cup no, but I mean this this is a this is a pretty good uh, cup for such a small drink. You're welcome for the two edits in your DMs. Did you DM me something, Seth? <laughs> but yeah, I I usually like to use this cup for uh, drinking ciders because it's a uh, you know it's a tree man. It is an ent. Oh, there they are. Thank you, Seth. So let's see. Let's give this lemony beverage. Ooh, hold on. Okay, you got a little, you got like the tail end of it. Ooh, oh, it fits perfectly. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice lemony beverage. Cheers, chat. Oh, good. You did hear the pour. Okay. I, I wasn't sure if you could hear it. Hmm. Probably be a little better cold. I probably should have thrown this in the fridge before I started, but that's okay. Luckily, I live in a very cold climate, so... Not bad. All in one swig? No, I'm not going to drink the whole thing in one swig. I want to savor this. Zim, I only have the one. Ya goof. But it is nice. With a lot of lemon drinks, I know one of the problems is, like, it being too lemony or too sweet. This is a nice balance. It's very mild. It's not that sour, actually. They say it's a, um, let's see, did they say slightly, slightly sweet? I'd say it leans more on the sweet side. This is, this is hardly sour, like at all. Maybe a little bit. But it's not bad. I like that. I, I'm, I'm enjoying that. It's a nice reprieve from all these other salty snacks, you know? Oh, they gave me a lollipop. A sour cola lollipop. Well, that might be pretty tasty. I think it's pretty good. It's a solid lemony drink. Just enough lemon, just enough sweet. Enjoy the flavor punch of this sweet and slightly sour lollipop. Wow, they gave me another sweet and sour thing. That's crazy. Wait, what the heck? Oh! They gave me like a dipstick. Open your candy bag, take a look at the lollipop, and then dip it in the candy powder for a sweet treat. Hell yeah, I love these. Come here, you. All right, so. Lollipop, you know, nothing too crazy. This is pretty standard. It's already kind of covered in a fine layer of powder, and it looks like it got a little smushed. Maybe? I don't know. Let's see. Hmm. It tastes like bubble gum. Like that pink bubble tape. Does anybody remember bubble tape? You know, 
God, is that even still around? That's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of bubble tape. If you know what that is, a high five. If you don't, that's okay. Back in the day, there used to be a gum brand called bubble tape. It's exactly what you think it is. It's basically fruit roll up, but bubble gum. It had a very distinct flavor. And that's what I'm getting from this, this powder. All right. I have now licked sufficiently, and now we have coated it with a nice layer of powder. Yes. Don't take that out of context. No, no, it still tastes the same. That's pretty much the only flavor I'm getting here. Is that kind of bubblegummy flavor. Hmm. I know it says cola, but I don't really actually wait. No, hold on. Okay. I can kind of taste the cola just a little bit. It is a very light cola flavor. It's not very strong. So it's not really what I'm used to, you know, with how Coca-Cola usually is. That shit has a very strong flavor. This, not as much so. This is pretty mild. Actually, this isn't even mild. This is very light. Hmm. It's tasty, though. I am enjoying this. I wish more lollipops came with, like, a powder that you could dip them in. Because, honestly, I hate sucking on lollipops. Whoop. I broke it. Somehow, I snapped it in half. Just by sucking on it. My sucking power is that great. I just sucked it clean in half. God, that'd be kind of intimidating. You just saw that on the street. Sucked so hard, it just snapped clean down the middle. Spooky. Well, now I have half of a lollipop in my mouth. Fuck. All right. We're going to do the taboo thing, and I'm just going to bite down and crunch it. You ready? Mmm. Delicious. Crunch. So crunchy. All right. Time to finish it off. Dab a little bit more white powder on it. And it is no more. But now I have a bag of white powder. I'm kidding. <laughs> I did not add, I did not just snuff a bag of white powder. Don't worry. Don't worry, chat. We're clean here. <coughs> Don't worry. I won't be hyped on sugar. Surely not. That was pretty tasty though. <laughs> if not to crunch, then why crunchy? Why? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Innocuous white powder. It's fine. It's fine. It just gives me energy. That's all it's there for. I promise. I'm not addicted. <laughs> that was that was good, though. Um, I'm a little sad that it broke in half. Like, as I was sucking on it, it just it just snapped clean in half. I feel like that's probably just due to, like, traveling. Um, it probably got damaged while it was in route. I don't know. That, that would be good pretty whole, though. Like, just being able to enjoy it for what it was. All right, what do we got next? What do we got next? We have a Mishmash Soda Candy Rope. Chewy candy rope. No, not more chewy candies. <laughs> Zendun tracks. No. No. 
No. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely, you see it. It's right there. I'm not. I'm not touching the stuff. It's. It's fine. Right now we got this rope. We got this colorful rope. Ooh, look at the pretty colors. Yes, be distracted by this. Ooh, shiny, rainbowy pride. Yeah, we're all for that. <laughs> Has a sweet soda flavored center and a mystery soda flavored. Mmm, a mystery, mystery flavored outer shell. What the hell is that supposed to mean? What is there's a chance it was just like Dr. Pepper flavored outer shell or or maybe it's like a like a lemon soda. It smells fruity. What the heck? I mean, I guess, you know, the rainbow motif. Hmm. It smells like banana almost. Maybe. Hmm. What is that? What is that scent? Ah, it's hard to place. But I've definitely smelt the smell before. I don't know. This is what it looks like. It's just like a, a white bar with this like kind of powdery looking like gray coating. I don't know. It doesn't look very appetizing. I'm not going to lie. It kind of looks... It kind of looks like a fruit roll-up that's been, you know, left out for for a bit too long, you know? I don't know. I guess we'll see how it tastes. You know, you know my opinion on chewy, chewy candies. I'm not a huge fan. So you've already kind of lost points by being a chewy candy, but I don't know. Maybe the flavor's good enough. If the mystery flavor can pull this off, we'll see. Hmm. 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 I have no flipping clue what this flavor is supposed to be. It really is a mystery. Ah. I hate it when it gets stuck in my teeth. All right, we're not gonna have any more of that. Oh, it like, it just dusted me. I just like sneezed powder on me. Fuck sake, man. I already had enough powder on me from the last candy. I don't need more. <coughs> have some more of my lemony beverage. Hmm, that's the stuff. Oh, it's got all over my book too. And my keyboard, bro. Okay, screw that candy. It made more of a mess than, than the candy that's literally just a bag of powder. What the fuck, man? Can't believe it. All right. What do we got next? We have a, ooh, a fried potato snack. We got another one of these. I, I think we got this one the last time, too. Ever wonder what an Americanized fried potato snack from Japan tastes like? These light and crispy French fry shaped treats are the perfect New Year's party snack for sharing. I'm pretty sure we got one of these for Christmas too. I'm gonna have to go back and check the VOD of the uh, December, December box, but uh, here's our fried potato snack. Pretty innocuous looking, you know, pretty generic. Just looks like a, a bag of of crisps, bag of chips. I like how it says USA on it. USA. Fried potato. Very nice, very flattering, you know. He's a happy potato. He's a very happy potato. Little does he know that he's eating his own brothers and sisters. That he's carrying around. It's horrible, horrible tragedy. Yeah, we've definitely had these before. I recognize these these snacks. I, I think I don't remember if they were like a particular flavor, but uh, yeah, they, they they look like potato sticks. Hmm. Yeah. 
that yeah that, that's that's a potato stick it's a potato chip but in in stick form these are these are pretty unremarkable as far as you know flavor goes i if you want a potato chip it's a nice alternative because again they're not super salty it gives you just enough salt to like get that savory kind of feeling but you know it doesn't coat your fingers with salt so it doesn't feel like you're just dehydrating yourself on purpose you know not bad not bad i think i like these ones a little bit more this salty potato snack as opposed to this potato snack but i like the extra salt you know the salt and seaweed combination let's see let's do let's do a comparison now we'll grab a little bit of this so we got some of these and then we'll grab a few of these let's we'll do one after the other so we got the the normal potato snack Okay, yeah, pretty generic. Seaweed salt potato snack. Mmm. Yep. That was better. This one's better. This has got more flavor. Can't eat those. I need the feeling of dehydration. <laughs> yes, I must feel the water leaving my body with every bite. Then these are the ones for you, Ray. These these potato snacks. These are the ones for you. These are the salty ones. You'll you'll feel that water osmosising out of you in no time. With those ones. Mm -hmm. No, but I do like these ones better. Perfect. Send them over. All right. All right. Let me just uh, seal them up here. Put a put a rubber band around it or something, and I'll just I'll throw it across the country towards you. <laughs> What else we got? I feel like we still have a good amount of stuff in here. Ooh, the ramen. They sent me soba! Ooh! Itome yas... Yam... Mm. Itomen... Yamaimo soba. Soba noodles are eaten New Year's to prom promote prosperity, long life, and a happy home. Let's see, boil the noodles for about three minutes, stir in the soup packet, mix together well, and serve. Hell yeah, I love soup soba. I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna make this up later tonight. Yeah. I'll probably cook this up later. After after stream for dinner. But got a packet of soba soba noodles. Maybe I'll make some, I'll, I'll fry up some fish sticks or something. I don't know, to go with it. There's probably a lot of... I'd probably go the best, though, still, I think. Maybe drop an egg in it. Do I have any vegetables? Do I have any onions? Hmm. Not really. That's okay, though. Or maybe some chicken. Some breaded chicken. I'd probably do all right with it. But we'll save that for later. All right. I think these are the last three things. These three things here. Yeah, okay. We got three more snacks. Three more snacks. Oh, they sent me another curry, curry crackers. Yamato IG curry crackers. I'm pretty sure we got these before as well. These curry snacks. These are really good, if I remember correctly. As a beloved snack is famous for its curry flavor and beloved home-style dish across the country. Crunch into these crispy crackers filled with aromatic spices. Hell yeah, we love the aroma. Oh, I love curry. Curry, curry... I didn't eat curry until I actually went to Japan to try curry. That was the first time I'd ever eaten curry. It was in a Japanese food court. Because there was a curry place that had curry. It was curry katsu. It's fantastic. I 
fell in love with it instantly. I couldn't believe I had never had curry prior to that. I partially blame my parents because they, I guess, weren't big curry people. I don't know. I feel like, feel like it would have done all right in our family. Curry. Most of us liked rice, and, you know, we were big fans of beef stew, and that's like a more watery, soupy curry. Sort of. Less spices, obviously, but... At least in its, like, form and consistency, it's it's similar enough. I don't know. It might be something I press my mother for uh, next time we chat. But very much like the potato snacks, except these have a little twist to them, and they're covered in delectable curry spices. Ah, that is a nice smell. I always enjoyed the smell of curry. It was never something that put me off. I just never, you know, had the taste for it until like five, no, 10 years ago. When did I go to Japan that one time? It was with my roommate. Was that 2016 that I went? Hmm. I don't remember. It's been almost 10 years though since I first tried curry. And now I am in mad love with it. This is another snack that I'm probably just gonna devour in one sitting. Like, for real. I have a couple more though, just, uh, just cause. Hmm. It's got an excellent crunch. Honestly, the curry flavor isn't that strong, to be honest. Like, I would probably want that to be a little stronger for my personal taste. But you can still taste it. You know, you get enough of it where it's not so bad. It's pretty tasty. It's a pretty tasty, you know? Oh boy. I already love what I'm seeing for this next one. We have a Choco Corn Puff Stick. I'm pretty sure we've got one of these as well in the past. Wish upon a star with this Adorable star-shaped corn puff snack for New Year's. This crispy corn puff balances out the sweetness of the smooth chocolate, almost like magic. Bro, I'm just gonna divide. I'm just gonna eat this. I'm just gonna. You wait. I I showed you right. That's what it looks like. It's got a little rainbow star. Hell yeah, because we love that. And uh, I'm like 90% sure we've had one of these, and it was delicious, and I ate it, and I loved it. I don't know if it was chocolate though. Do we remember if it was chocolate or was it just like normal corn snack? I don't know. I don't remember. Okay, the chocolate scent gives me much like this taiyaki here. That's what it smells like. Actually, to a slightly more intense degree. The taiyaki is a... Uh... You can definitely smell the chocolate, but it's not as strong. It's not as pungent. This one, it hits you. It hits you like a ton of bricks. Not a bad way, though. Especially if you like chocolate. It's good shit. Quite literally. Maybe. It's kind of what it looks like, huh? If you caught, if you caught it, then you, you caught it. If you don't, that's okay. You know, we don't need to go there. Mmm. It's not as crunchy as I would have liked. But I feel like because it is, it's chocolate, it's definitely the chocolate that's making it not as crunchy. The cho chocolate will always make something a little bit more smooth, especially if it's cooked into it. Now, if this was like a corn snack that was covered in chocolate, then you would get that nice crunch. But because this is a chocolate corn snack, as in they mix chocolate into the corn, you don't, it's it's more dense. That's what it is. It has that kind of chocolate denseness to it. So if you're looking for something like, uh, like a nice crunchy chocolate snack, this one ain't it. It still has a little bit of it, but it's, it's again, it's not as much as I would like out of a, a corn snack. Twenty degrees outside? I doubt it, but good luck, Seth. Your pee stays very warm for quite a while. 
Even after it leaves your body. You know, think of it this way, right? Your body temperature should be around 98.6 degrees. And so should pretty much everything inside of you, correct? At least to a certain degree, right? Around that. I actually don't know. Would it be more or less warm? I mean, it should be less warm, right? Because 98 degrees is pretty hot. I wonder why I wonder why that is. It's some mechanism, right? Or maybe it's the fact that like the second it leaves your body, it just like it cools down by that much. Maybe. Hmm. I don't know. Shower thoughts perhaps. But this is a pretty solid snack. I don't hate it. I'm enjoying it. It's it's that nice chocolate flavor and it gives you a little crunch, so if you only want a little crunch and you want more of a chocolate, then sure. You can't really go wrong with a with chocolate covered corn. You know? Oh god, could you imagine? Wait, surely there's somewhere. Somewhere you can get like a chocolate covered corn on the cob, right? Like some state fair. Has anybody been to a state fair where they've seen a chocolate covered corn on the cob? I feel like they cover everything in chocolate at, at like fairs and stuff like that. Because they definitely fry everything. You can find anything under the sun fried at, like, a state fair. Probably. Chocolate covered, though, I don't know. I feel like it really depends on the on the fair or the, the... Wherever you're going. But I would love to see a chocolate covered corn on the cob. Buttered corn on the cob. Chocolate? Chocolate covered buttered corn on the cob. I... Ooh, I'm kind of craving that now. Fuck. Damn it. We'll have to make do with this. One day. One day I'm going to make chocolate covered corn on the cob. And I'll tell you how it is. Hmm. Alright. We've got one more snack left. Is this eel? Oh, it's not. But Oh wait! This is Kabayaki Taro Jerky. Yummy classic Dagashi snack has the perfect char-grilled eel flavor. <gasps> it's eel flavored. Yes. Chewy texture makes it the ultimate festive snack. Okay, well, I don't know about chewy. But I mean, I'm all for eel. Eel's delicious. Oh, I didn't really show you the packaging. Hold on. Let me let me rewrap it just a little bit. Here's the packaging. I mostly fixed it. <clears throat> it didn't freeze. It just became really cold. So I set the bottle of water out there to see how long it would take to freeze. Oh, my God. So um, me and the roomies, we use um, bottled bottled. Uh, what's it? Bottled. Mineral water, spring water, one of those um, for our drinking water, right? And the bottles are outside lined up and we have a tarp over them to help prevent freezing. The other night I was bringing one in and I was having some of the like the most trouble I've ever had trying to like jam it into the into the water cooler. Uh, and after like several attempts, to, to get it to puncture the hole. I was like, okay, what the fuck is going on? And then I realized the top half of it was frozen, or at least frozen enough where the tube, it was stuck, right? It was preventing the, the I don't know, injector or whatever, the thing that punctures the hole from getting far enough to actually puncture the hole. And I sat there for a good like five, 10 minutes, just like, pouring some kind of semi-warm water over it just to, like, get it to melt. I finally got it to the point where, it, like, it would break up and I could, like, smush it in. But my god. 
Uh, I was talking to one of my other roommates. Apparently, that is now a common thing. The last several that we have been brought in have been slightly to moderately frozen. So that's always fun. But we have this uh, eel flavored fish jerky. I'm kind of excited for. So bottoms up. Mmm. Flavor-wise, it's delicious. Mmm. You got that nice smoky eel flavor. That shit's good. I just hate how chewy it is. Ah! Ah, that would have been so much better if it wasn't so damn chewy. So it loses points for being chewy. But it was still tasty. Ah. Delicious. Delicious. And that should be everything. Yep. The only thing I didn't eat was the ramen. But I'm going to have that later. Ooh, I see you. My little potato snack trying to sneak away. You ain't getting away from me, little potato snack. All right. Ranking time. Uh, hands down. These agemochi bites. Hands down. They stole the show. These top tier. So agemochi... Agemochi Biori. If you can find this brand at your local Asian food market, highly recommend. Grab some of these. Um, even if it's not the same brand, if you just find agemochi, like fried mochi, that shit's the tits. I tell you what. Uh, let's see. Next best thing. Next best thing. Okay, next best savory thing I would say would be the sesame, sesame potato sticks. Just because they have like a much deeper flavor than like the salt or just the basic bitch ones that don't have like any salt flavoring to them at all. Those would be next. Uh, then the curry ones. If it was more curry flavored, I would probably rate those higher because I love curry flavor, but it's it's pretty weak sauce curry flavor. You barely get any of it. The sesame, at least you can you you get the nice sesame taste. So curry comes next. Then we go the sea salts um, or ses uh, seaweed salty potato snacks. Then we go the then we go the prets. Honestly, the prets have a, have a nicer flavor than the basic potato snack. So that's all the savory. And then for sweet. Although, who knows, maybe maybe these soba noodles will be really good, and they might rank higher. In fact, they probably will rank higher. If I were to just guess, I'm going to put these probably in front of the seaweed salt potato sticks. Just because you can, like, add stuff to it, you can kind of mix around the flavor. I don't know what flavor these would be, though. Because actually, the only soba I've ever eaten was cold soba. In that, like, dipping sauce that it comes with. I've never had a hot soba before. So this is a new experience. This could be interesting. I'm looking forward to this for dinner. Um, okay, so yeah. That would that would go... Mm, actually, I'd probably put those above the curry ones. Because I'm pretty sure those... That's going to have much more flavor to it. That uh, That flavor packet usually can go wrong with those um let's see now for the sweets for the sweets um sweets are a little more difficult because so many of them were chocolatey the corn the chocolate corn stick was 
was pretty pretty high up there just because it's chocolate. But actually, I think I'm going to have to give top sweet spot to this donut, this red bean donut. This was really good. This had a nice flavor to it. Then the chocolate. No, then the Kit Kat, actually. Kit Kat. It's it's this one is good. I don't know why. Something about maybe the fact that it's also white chocolate probably enhances the flavor just a little bit, just a, just a tiny bit. But white chocolate, pretty solid. Um, then this. I'd only say this comes after the uh, Kit Kats is because of the texture. If this was crunchier, this would win, 100%. But this, the, the Kit Kats nail the chocolate and crunch. This is kind of like, it, it didn't quite didn't quite get there the chocolate corn star um then after the corn star because that did have a richer chocolatey flavor than this taiyaki this wafer taiyaki this would come next actually i'm gonna finish this off right now mm. and then we go the lollipop Lollipop comes after. And then the chewy. This chewy soda soda stick. Now is that everything? I think so. I believe that's everything. Those are my rankings for this box. Mm-mm mm mm. -mm, -mm. Taki was still good, though. All right, let's see. Garbage. Garbage. I'm going to try to leave everything out that's not garbage. Let me just uh, save this white powder for later. Put this over here for after stream. Take a hit of that. I mean, what? All right, remove the handicap. Andy Cam can go away. We don't need that no more. Hell yeah. Another another pretty solid round of snacks. Really only like one that I didn't particularly care for. And that was the chewy, the chewy soda snack. That was the only one where I was just kind of like, eh. Weird mystery soda flavored chewy snack. Nah. Not my jam. But everything else was good. So far, I say everything else, but again, I haven't tried the ramen yet. So technically, 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 I can't say everything else. Most everything else. There we go. That's the technically correct. Because we love being technically correct here, don't we, Goldie? That's the way. Let's see. Indeed, we strive for technical correctness as precision is paramount. Precision if you have any further questions or is requests, paramount. Please don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy your time at the Golden Persimmon Theater. Oh, thank you, Goldie. Oh, wait, the beverage. Hmm. Where would I put that? I mean, I can't really compare in good conscience a beverage to like solid food snacks. Now, if I had another beverage, I could probably compare it to that. Hmm. All right, if you've ever had a flavored water before. Oh, hey, Seth. Using the power move. <laughs> if you've ever had a flavored beverage, like a like a like a fruity powdered Oh the honey. Okay. Thank you, Ray, for the honey. <laughs> I have a little bit of sweet honey. But that's what this lemon beverage kind of tastes like. It's the best analogy that I can get. 
<clears throat> that I can give it. If you've ever had like one of those powdery flavored um, things that you add to water just to make your, your water taste like something other than water, it tastes like a better version of that. Didn't want to forget. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Ah. <sighs> but I do recommend it. It's good. The what was it? CC CC lemon. If you can find one of these at an Asian food market, I'd say go for it. It's a very, it's a very nice, refreshing um, little beverage, and it's healthy. It gives you a lot of vitamin C. The vitamin C of twelve lemons at your disposal. That's a lot of lemons. Now I don't know how much vitamin C come per lemon. To be fair, I don't know. Maybe. Per lemon is like, you need 12 lemons to get a, a full dose of vitamin C anyway. Not that it really matters. Even if you, like, to be honest, a lot of the time, you know, like supplements or, or vitamins, for the most part, it's kind, of, it's kind of a scam. It's kind of a scam. Vast majority of your nutrition you can get just through eating, like, you know, a relatively balanced diet. And... More often than not, like, it's like, oh, like a thousand percent of your, your daily needed, whatever, vitamin, some letter, right? Well, your body can only process a hundred percent of that, right? So, yeah, you're eating like a thousand percent of it, but nine, ninety percent of that, you're, you're pissing out anyway, right? So, just eat healthier. Eat some vegetables. Have a fruit, like an apple, every now and again, and you'll be fine. You don't need to buy multivitamins. They're not really necessary. <laughs> Honestly, kind of a waste of money. In my opinion. You know, if that's what you want to spend your money on, that's, that's totally fine. I used to buy vitamins for the longest time. You forgot about your water? Well, it's frozen now. You, you waited too long, Seth. Frozen solid. That's some good lemony beverage. <clears throat> Alrighty. Um, let's see. I think that's gonna about do it for tonight. A little bit of a shorter stream, but we did go for quite a long time last Saturday. If you happen to miss uh, me and May, um, Pyong Pyong Dice, or Mamie, uh, talking about uh, anime for this season, you can go check it out on um, her channel. Uh, let me shout her out real quick. I s oh, wait, is it? Ah. Nice. There she is. So go check out Pyong Pyong Dice. Um, me and her did a uh, collab last Saturday. We talked about anime for a solid, like, five hours or so. It was a good long time. Um, so if you want some more of that, just head over to her channel. You can find it. Uh, I believe she has the VOD already. Sleep is taking you over. She'll head to Eep. Thanks for the wonderful stream. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. Zim, have a wonderful night's sleep. Oh, we'll be we'll be seeing you later, my dude. We're we're wrapping up here anyway. So, this is where Whoops. Sorry, I'm double checking her channel. I don't want to give misinformation after all. Yes, okay. It is there. It is there. Oh, okay, maybe it wasn't for four. It was it was for almost four hours. We talked about anime for nearly four hours. That was a damn long time. It was a lot of fun. I do love doing that with me it's good good time always a good time hanging out with her you can go check that out um otherwise i will see you guys tomorrow uh we're gonna go back to 
Hmm. What do I feel like doing tomorrow? I don't know. It's either going to be the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood or some more Witcher. We'll kind of see how I'm feeling. Uh, check the old Twitters. Uh, uh, there's my card. You can find all my socials there. But um, follow me on Twitter. Uh, I always post when I'm going to go live or, or at least what I'm doing. Um, my schedule won't change. Tuesday, Wednesdays, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And Saturdays, usually around like 10 or 11. Kind of depends on how early I wake up. <laughs> but I usually, I, I try to stream at least then. Although, let's see, this coming Saturday is the 20th. Um, I actually have another collab uh, this coming Saturday. So that's that's what we'll be doing then. I believe it's at noon and I'll be playing some Lethal Company with Luna B again. Uh, had a collab with her. Oh, when was that? When? When was that? Oh, gods. Was it New Year's? Christmas? I want to say that was like the week of New Year's. I did that. Maybe it was like the fifth or the sixth. It was the last time. So it's been a couple weeks, but. We're coming back together. Um, I believe it's going to be for her three-year birthday. It's a birthday collab. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Mind like a steel trap, this one. If maybe slightly rusted. But regardless. So tomorrow, Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood, uh, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard. So we'll be starting the same time, uh, about hour 45 minutes um, ago. So an hour and 45 minutes in the past from now, that's when we'll be starting again. Probably some Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. I feel like that's that's probably the game that we're going to play. It's another fairly chill stream. And then Saturday, we've got uh, some Lethal Company. So that's going to be crazy and exciting and uh, eventful. We had some we had some good stuff. I still haven't gotten to edit the clips. I have been I have been editing like a fiend, though. Don't get me wrong. Um, I have two two clips edited and they are scheduled um i'm gonna be releasing them every sunday because and i tell you this because sundays according to my youtube analytics sundays are my most popular days don't know why that's just the way it is according to youtube sundays that's where i get the most traction so those are the days that i will be releasing my videos sundays around like seven in the morning my time 7 7 a.m pacific standard so it's it's gonna be much later for like majority of the world but you know that's the good time that's the good good time um actually though i do have one video is gonna be coming out tomorrow i have one one video coming out tomorrow and then the next one will be sunday and i'll i will try to upload one every sunday as best i can As best I can. I have also been working on um, some commissioned edits as well. Um, Spectre, Spectre Zero has uh, sent me a batch of of clips. I'm about halfway through editing um, the ones that she sent me. So I'm gonna try to finish those up first before I start working again on my own. Because we still have, you know, I still have some time. Still have some time. Yeah, I gotta spread it out. I gotta spread the work out. I get into the habit of you know, I have all these things that I want to do and I want to get them all done like as quickly as possible. But realistically, I don't need to. There's no rush. I have a video coming out tomorrow and then I have another one coming out um, on the 22nd, 21st. One tomorrow, one on the 21st. So I already have two videos lined up for like another week. Plenty of time, plenty of time to get through Spectre's videos and then make some more of my own to upload mm -hmm. so look forward to that i still have a bunch of clips in the can um seth uh, thank you seth praise you you gave me a few more that i can i can throw together something and i actually have i have a a video idea that i want to record as well that i'll be 
probably uploading sooner rather than later, depending on how quickly I can get it done and edited. Um, it may be the next next Sunday, so not the 21st, but the 28th will be that one I'll release. Maybe. Or maybe I'll just release it anyway. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. But lots of stuff planned. So look forward to that. Some original Zayden content. Yeah. An original video. Not just a clip that I've edited. But. Yeah. That's exciting. That's exciting. I'm really excited. I, I'm kind of dying to do it. But I know. I know I got to rein back the excitement. And I got to, you know, plan it out. Finish the work that I already have. But it's on the list. It's on the list. So look forward to that. Look forward to that. You can find all my socials once again. It's on the card. If you'd like to drop some follows, I would be most appreciative. But until then, until tomorrow, I thank you all for joining me. I wish you a very wonderful evening. Uh, let me see who is around, who is stirring at this hour of the evening that I could send you to to vibe and hang out and chillax. Let's see. Who's streaming at this hour? Surely somebody I know, right? Somebody? Anybody? Ah, I've got a couple people. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, let me open up the, uh, the list. The list, good sirs and madams. Where's my list? List? List. There it is. Okay, okay. Okay. Yes. Been a month since you. Hmm. We could go somewhere new as well. Feeling a little adventurous. After eating all these snacks, I'm filled with a, a vigor. How are you feeling about some art? Lovely little art stream. Maybe. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll go here. Fuck it. I've never raided them before, but I've seen them around and they they're they're nice and they're just they're, they're making art. They're making the beautiful art. How's it going, Cosmic? We're just raiding. <laughs> you came in right at the last moment. Yeah, sorry about that. A little shorter stream tonight, um, as we, we just were sampling some delicious snacks from across the sea. Had some pretty good ones, had some pretty good ones. But I gotta go make this soba, because I am hungry, like, and I want to actually eat food. But we'll be back again tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad place, but for longer. Because I, I do actually want to, to play through uh, that game a bit more. All right, we need a moat. I need a moat. What's a tasty looking moat? Mm, we could do popcorn. Popcorn's good. Popcorn's delicious. I go in corner now. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you missed it. 
But it is what it is. I hope you are having a wonderful night, though. And uh, you go and enjoy um, the person that I'm going to go raid. Yeah. They're just doing art. They're being chill. Vibing. Doing the doing the, the lines and the, the colors and the, you know, the other things <laughs> that are art related. Hmm. All right, so that's the raid message. <gasps> Delicious raid. And we are gonna go give uh, Starcrossed channel a raid. Thanks for streaming. Yeah, appreciate y'all for uh, for hanging out, for being here, and watching me eat stuff. <laughs> I know not the most exciting thing for a lot of people, but. I do appreciate you. Nonetheless, you're all wonderful. Let's see, did I get that right? All right, perfect. So we're gonna go raid Zem. Copy my raid message myself. All right. Goldie, it's time once again to end the show. Uh, would you please give a few words of encouragement? to my dear viewers as we send them off into the night. For we see you all again tomorrow, dear hopefully. Dear viewers, as the curtains close, may your spirits be uplifted and your hearts inspired. The Golden Persimmon Theater thanks you for joining us and we hope to see you again soon. Good night. Wherever you rest your heads, wherever you rest those weary souls, I wish you well. So until next time, ciao for now.